In order to really get a feel for what linear transformations do, let's look at some specific examples in the simplest possible case. Let's say two by two matrices. That is transformations from the plane to the plane. The simplest matrices are diagonal matrices. And what these do is rescale the X and Y axes of the plane. Consider two, zero, zero, negative one half. What does this do? Look at what it does to the basis vectors. This sends the I vector to what? To zero, that is twice the I vector. It sends the J vector to what? Zero, negative one half, that is negative one half times the J vector. By linearity of the transformation, it does the same thing everywhere. It stretches out the X components horizontally by a factor of two, it squeezes the vertical components by a factor of two, and then, and then flips it over. It takes positive Y components to negative Y components. Now again, these diagonal matrices keep the X and Y axes invariant. Watch out for minus signs because that winds up flipping the axis and then the rest of the plane over with it. Now, if we take this to an extreme example where one of the diagonals is zero, then what we get is something called a projection. In this case, zero, 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 one. What this does is it sends the I vector to the zero vector. It kills the horizontal components of everything in the plane. This projection matrix collapses the entire plane along horizontal lines to the vertical axis, which it leaves invariant, as you can see. Now, lots of interesting stuff here. In higher dimensions, these projections can be really interesting. You can project onto things other than just the x-axis or the y-axis. But these are really just extreme examples of rescalings. Okay, next comes an interesting but a little bit hard to see sort of matrix. This is called a shearing transformation. Consider one, one, zero, one. What does this do to the basis vectors? Well, it takes the I vector, one, zero, to the first column, one, zero. It, it leaves horizontal components alone. What does it do to the vertical? Well, the J vector, zero, one, gets sent to the second column, one, one. That means that the y-axis gets sent to the line where y equals x. Now, if we extend this to the entire rest of the plane, then what is happening is that the horizontal lines are preserved, but the vertical lines are getting, are getting sheared over to, to match along the diagonals, along that line y equals x. Now, um, the sliding, the shearing is really important. This is really what these off-diagonal terms encode. You might, you might think, oh, this is just rotating. No, it's not a rotation. This is a shear. It is different from a rotation. Now, there are other types of shears. If you want to share uh, vertically, then you could just take the transpose of this matrix. That would affect that type of shear. Okay, last class we're going to look at, very important. These are the two by two rotation matrices. This has a special name, R theta, is the matrix with columns cosine theta, sine theta, and minus sine theta, cosine theta. Those columns are where the i and j vectors get sent. So you pick your favorite angle, theta, I don't know, maybe pi over three or pi over four, something like that. Look at this matrix, R sub theta, it takes the i vector to the first column, cosine theta, sine theta, you know what that is, that's, that's, that's got that angle theta in there, and it takes the j vector to minus sine theta, cosine theta. By the fact that it's a linear transformation, everything else on the plane gets rigidly rotated along with it. Now notice this uh, does what you think it should do for various special values of theta. And in the particular case of theta equals pi over two, we recover our friend J, the matrix zero, negative one, one, zero. This matrix, which acts like the complex number I, is really rotation by pi over two in the counterclockwise direction. This is so cool.